What's up, Papa Power Ass Crew? On our last video, I showed you guys multiple ways to splice wire. Even used my little scale to pull that wire to see which one was the strongest. But well, today, we're going to show you guys multiple ways to protect that wire once you get it spliced. Roll the intro. Go start this out with our union splice. We'll take our wires and cross it like this right here, like we did in the last video. And wrap the wire around itself. Like that. And then we'll take this one and wrap it the opposite direction. And squeeze that wire tight so it makes a good wrap, tight wrapper on the wire. There you go. Now the most common our wiring is electrical tape. Well, typically black. But since I'm using black wire, I'm going to use some electric, uh, yellow electric tape. So it contrasts against the wire so you can see what's up. Pull you off a little length of it. Start with your tape behind your insulation. You see right here, there's wire where it ends. Bring it back past it a little bit. Wrap it over itself. And as you wrap your wire, try to have at least half the overlap. Half meaning you get the width of your tape here. Each time you make a wrap around it, you want to overlap at least half of the width of your tape. If you overlap more, that's fine, but just don't overlap no less. It looks like I cut two off a little bit more. Not the end of the world. We'll pull off just a little bit more so I can show you one thing. Again, overlapping by at least a half. And here's the end of the insulation right along in there. Bring the tape at least, I would say at least half inch, three quarters of an inch or more past where the insulation is on the wire. Ta da! And typically that's where we end them at. Now, if it's under the hood, now if this is under your dash or something like that, that'd be okay. Not a big deal. But if it's under your hood, or if it's especially like if you're doing a, uh, putting a trailer hitch plug in, you want to go one further step. Ta-da, wire tie. Now what am I going to do with a wire tie, really? Right here where your tape ended. Take your wire tie, go around that. And where the tape ended, take your wire tie and pull it good and tie it against it. Then we trim it off. Now, why do we do that? Because if it's like under the hood or back around your trailer hitch, and if you want to put in a uh, for your trailer lights, after a while, the wind, the elements, and stuff like that may make that tape want to come unraveled. So, if you take put a little tiny wire tie right there, that'll help secure the end of that uh, tape, and it doesn't come undone. And you've got a solid tape connection right there. Just remember, refer back to my other video if you want to know which uh, wraps and splices are the strongest. This is this wrap I just did is my most common one that I use. It's strong, it's effective, it works. If you're not going to solder. I'd still recommend soldering, but if you're not going to solder, use that splice I just used. Like I said, refer back to the video and I'll link it up here in the description. Link it up here in the corner or down in the description for you guys to check out that video. Alright, let's go on to the next one. Now for our next wire protection method, we're going to use tape. Nope, not that tape. We already done that. We are using da -da, friction tape. Look real close at that texture. See that cloth? 
Friction tape is a like a cloth tape. The adhesive is actually on both sides of the tape. It's like a rubber adhesive. So whenever you wrap this around your wire, the adhesive both front and back, it bonds to itself really well. Now one thing about it as I'm handling it, this stuff's sticky. So let's go ahead and wrap our splice here. And this right here, like regular vinyl tape or rubber tape, whatever you're taking to pull and wrap, pull and tear it. This is a little bit more, it's got some strength to it. So sometimes just take your knife or your cutters, cut it that way. You you can tear it, but yeah. Sometimes it's a little bit of a battle. Depending on the quality of the tape. Now we're gonna take and wrap around itself. Again, making sure you're doing at least half to three quarter overlap of each wrap. And there you go. Now friction tape, what it's used for, if you've got wiring that's near a metal, a sharp metal edge, see, so for instance, I'll use this pair of scissors as an example. If this is a body seam right here and you've got wiring that's really close to it, the wiring, if you don't pull it back out of the way with wire ties or something like that, if it gets up next to it, next thing you know, it's gonna be chafing up against it. Regular rubber or vinyl tapes like these are not as resistant, abrasion resistant as this tape here. And it's friction tape, so if it was rubbing or whatever, it would last longer, but still yet, you always want to make sure your wiring is away from the metal edges. It's still a bad thing. Now, the downside to using this friction tape, like I said earlier, it's sticky and gooey as heck. So if you want to, you can take regular tape after you put your friction tape on for abrasion resistance, which is also called electrical properties, insulation properties. You can also put a layer of this over top of it if you want to, whatever color you may have, red, black, whatever the case may be. That way you ain't got that sticky, gooey feel to it. And if you want to, if it's if it's required, put your little wire tie on the end. And there we have friction tape. So what wire protection are we using this time? That's right, good old fashioned heat shrink. Great stuff right here. Got our splice already set up. And we see, this is a 16 gauge wire, so we're gonna use this color right here. We'll come over top of the wire, bring it down over top of our splice. And what you want to do is, so, okay, right there's my edge of the insulation. You can bring it back there towards the edge of the insulation, kind of center it. Boom, that's where we're going to shrink it at. Oh, we got my heat gun. Now, if you look really close, you can see where the heat shrink went around the wire. And you can see the wire strands actually through the heat shrink itself. So that means you've got a good shrink property. And recent, I don't I like a better way of saying it. I'm not sure how you say it, but honestly, well, honestly what it boils down to is this. Heat shrink has different uh, shrink ratios. Ratios means some of them will shrink half its size. Some of them is like 0.25, whatever. It's the how much the tubing will shrink from its original size. So this particular kit here, uh, let's see if it says, this is probably a 0.5, because this right here is just a basic heat shrink kit. Your basic heat shrink kit does a, a 0.5, which means it shrinks to half its size. Let's see, this kit right here, nope, it doesn't say. Now say for instance, this kit right here, 
says right here shrinks to half its diameter which means as a quarter inch is shrinking down to an eighth and so on so on so on one inch shrinks down to a half inch all that good stuff so it'll shrink to half its size and that's important whenever you're choosing what diameter wire you're working with what gauge wire now let's talk about different types of heat shrink now this is two different types of heat shrink. This is your basic automotive heat shrink that's used anywhere and everywhere you pick it up at your local auto parts store. This is marine heat shrink. Notice the wall thickness difference. This is a 0.5. This right here shrinks a lot more than this one right here. It squeezes down a lot more as it shrinks. So it goes to a small diameter once it's shrunk as far as it can go around the wire. But also notice something too. First, look at the automotive. Look down the side of it. See how flat the color? I mean, it's like a flat black. Well, if you look at the marine, come on there. See that shininess right there? That's not grease. What that is, it's, a, it's an adhesive. It's glue. So as this heat shrink right here shrinks down, that glue inside there melts down and bonds to the jacket of the wire. It bonds to the jacket here, which gives you a waterproof and a stronger grip on the wire itself. This marine right here, if I'm using anything outside, but it'll be under the hood, under the chassis, under the frame, you know, back around the bumper, doing um, a trailer hitch connection or something, I always use the marine. Now let's look at another way of uh, connecting and protecting our wires. I'm sure everyone recognizes those old school butt connectors. They're pretty straight and simple. Take your wire. Twist. Looks like I need to trim a little bit off. Twist this one so I can trim it back. Now, if you trim your wire while it's all frayed out, so I can't, you get the little wire shards everywhere. But if you want to trim it, twist it first because it fits up inside the connectors is better anyway. Then whenever you go to trim them, you don't have the little wire shards everywhere. The wire strands, fibers, or whatever you call them. So now we got this trimmed down. Buck connector. You see how I've got it twisted this way? To take it and kind of... Yeah, no, there he goes. And kind of give it a little twist like that. These things are here like the super crimpers. That's because you can see right there. And the big long handles, you can get some pressure on these babies. What you want to watch, which is it's hard to see, the metal jacket inside the plastic sleeve. And give it a good hard crimp. Get that side done. Take this one. Put it up inside there like that. Same thing. A good hard squeeze. And if you want to, if you want to come out on your jacket a little bit, yeah, right here. There you go. And we got a good solid connection. The only downside to these right here is that you got an exposed metal up inside here. You can crimp them like that, then come back in behind it with some good heat shrink over top of that and shrink it down. But why would you do that when you've got that? What is that, you ask? This is a butt connector. Similar to the one we just showed you. But this uh, is heat shrink around this instead of just a regular plastic tube. Observe. We're taking twist to trim these back a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to take our little butt connector... Feed it up inside there. A little divot right there where my thumbnail is. That is, it tells the wire stop right there. You can't go no further. Then you take your crimpers. Crimp that baby down. And ditto to the other side.
but don't let the wire fall out until you crimp it. Here we go. You can give it a little gentle tug if you want to to make sure it's good and secure. And then you shrink it right down to the wire. But here's the downside to these. That is better than a standard butt connector. But look right there. See, that's where my cramper bit into the plastic. When I squeezed down on it, I tore a hole in it. So when it shrank, the hole got a little bigger. These are just a little bit more expensive than standard butt connectors, but not by a whole lot. Also, look very closely at the end if I get the camera focusing on that. You see the little shininess right there on the very end of it? That has that adhesive that I mentioned earlier, the glue up inside there. It squeezes out on the ends right there. It's on both ends, so you get a little bit of glue squeeze out, which helps seal the ends of this. So if your crimper doesn't break the jacket like mine did here and there, you're good to go. So eh, probably what you do is not squeeze as hard as I did. But there's also another option. If you got this going on here, called liquid electrical tape and I'll put a picture up ding, right there and you can take paint over this right here with electrical tape the liquid electrical tape and once it dries you got a good solid seal sealing this right here back up I don't care what kind of twisty connections you make or what kind of insulation you put over you can't beat an old school solder joint because whenever you solder your wires the wire becomes one piece all the way through. They know this wire twisted together, risk it coming apart later on or anything like that. Once that solder soaks through each one of those strands, it becomes solid. But, I got this little loop on here where I was testing on my last video where I was testing pulling wires, pulling the joints apart. Obviously, I'm not going to pull a solder joint apart, so I'm not even going to bother testing how many pounds it is to pull it. But being that I had the knot on there, what did I have to do? If I'm going to cover a heat shrink, I had to put the heat shrink on first. Now, if you're going to do a solder joint and you got a heat shrink, slide your heat shrink on the wire first and slide it way up the wire. Because any heat that transfers from the copper wire to the jacket here could actually go up into the heat shrink and cause it to start shrinking down prematurely before you get over on this. Premature shrinkage, you know. You see right there where the jacket got a little bit of insulation? Jacket got a little bit hot while soldering it. So now that we got this all soldered up, we're going to take our heat shrink, come over the top of it, and if you take your finger, put it right there where the edge of the insulation is. Boom, bump it against it. Bring it back over a little bit because you keep your finger in place about where the insulation is. Feel the edge of it there, where it's it here, right there's the edge of the insulation here. That gets your um, heat shrink. About centered. I think I moved it right there. If I can feel it right there. But if you got a big long piece, you can lap it way out here too. But it's just a piece I had laying over here. So now that we got that set up and ready to go, get our heat gun.
Now the heat shrink that I used is that Marine's heat shrink. So right there, there's a little bit of glue squeeze out, which means that is a strong, strongest connection you're going to create. One, I soldered it. I had a good tight twist inside here on the wire fibers itself. Then I soldered it. Then I used Marine heat shrink, which has the glue squeezing out right here and both ends you see a little bit squeezing out right there. That is a perfectly sound electrical connection that you can create with, throughout your car, building wiring harness or whatever it is you may be doing to your vehicle, Jeep, car, motorcycle, whatever. This is the best way you can do it. Good solid electrical wrap of your fibers, of your copper strands. Good strong twist. The union joint I'll be keep showing you guys. Then solder it. Then marine heat shrink. It don't get no better than that, people. Okay, remember that wire joint from the last video? That's called the rat tail joint. You simply just take two ends sticking up like this. You got two ends sticking up like you're here. You simply twist them together. Just twist, 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 twist. Good tight uh, squeeze. And you get that. But then, if you want to make it even more secure, use these. Put that right over top of it. Take your crimpers. Get right on that metal band. Squeeze. Now you've got a solid connection that's not going to vibrate loose or get pulled loose or anything. Again, the downside, just like, like a butt connector, your wire strands down inside there are exposed. So if you're getting, if this is used outside under the engine compartment, under the chassis or somewhere, back bumper for a trailer hitch connection or whatever, if you get any kind of water debris up inside there, it's going to start a corrosion of the wires and eventually it'll start degrading your connection. So if this is under your dash or something like that, not a big deal. But anywhere in the engine compartment or under your vehicle anywhere, this is a no-no. Again, you could always do the heat shrink thing. Come over top of it, lap it way down over here. But whenever you do that, then you risk the uh, your water or whatever. You run a heat shrink over top of it, like it's right here, if you got one that fits it. And it shrinks down, but you're risking the issue of, if it's big enough to go over top of this, will it shrink enough to capture both of these wires tightly? And then any kind of water debris will get in between the wire here and the edge of your heat shrink even if you are using marine style with the glue inside of it you still gonna have some gappage going on here to get water and debris up inside there so don't use this anywhere outside because it will eventually start corroding your connection underneath here now, earlier i was talking about heat shrink this is the regular heat shrink this is the marine heat shrink you can see by the little shiny stuff down inside of it right there the shiny stuff is glue as i mentioned earlier that glue bonds to the jacket of the wire this just squeezes the wire so if this has got a glue that's supposed to bond to the jacket of the wire this lace of the wire how much stronger is it i think we need to find out so what we got here is a piece of speaker wire i split it right down the middle so therefore we got the exact same kind of wire both sides um same jacket it's kind of smooth which would be a good representation of your typical wire so what we're going to do is, I'm going to put this regular heat shrink on this one, marine on this one. I got the yellow tape on this right here, so we know to signify this is the marine and the yellow tape. These pieces of heat shrink are the exact same length. They're the same diameter. As you can see here, the difference is this is a thinner wall. This is your typical run-of-the-mill heat shrink, and this is marine. This has got a thicker wall wall thickness is much thicker with the glue in it this is a thinner wall with no glue so now i'm just gonna let this cool because this is still kind of hot this one's cooled down this right here obviously where we just cooked it is still warm so let's let this ride for a little bit let them completely cool so therefore we got a fair test this is the regular heat streak so here's the marine yellow tape. This is the gluey stuff right here. Got the glue in there. This is the regular heat shrink. Turn on our scales. So let zero. Ready? Let's pull. Hmm. Well, it didn't turn loose, but it did tear in half.
Interesting. Now we have the marine heat shrink hooked up. Now when we tested the regular heat shrink, I, I was actually expecting the jacket to pull off of the wire and it didn't. It ended up breaking right here in the middle. Kind of surprised me, but yet at the same time, this is pretty thin stuff. This is just like you said, like I said, just plain Jane. Go to your auto parts store, pick up some uh, heat shrink, plain stuff. It's a good insulator for keeping debris and moisture out. Obviously, it has no uh, pull strength, which it wasn't designed to. That's why if you do a solder joint or a proper wire wrap, you know, if you do a good union joint, you get your wires like this, as I showed you guys earlier in the video. And on my past video, I showed you all the different style wire joints. This right here is my favorite wrap. It's the strongest of all of them and the easiest to do and even in a tie spot. So then you get that right there. Then you take your insulation, your heat shrink, put it on top of that. It doesn't have to worry about the leaning your strength of stretch because the wire has all that. It just seals the wires from all the outside debris and moisture and such. So that's actually what heat shrink's job is, not the torture I'm putting it through. So, let's see what happens. The reason for the test is I'm actually expecting the jacket to pull off the wires and it didn't, so here we go, let's pull. Sixteen pounds, seventeen, seventeen four. And you can see the thickness difference in the material. The jacket did not slide. I mean I'm looking at the glue joint here. The glue came up the jacket right here as it should. Wire's not sliding off. It's a good solid seal. If you guys enjoyed this video, did you learn a little something from it? If you did, hit that thumbs up for me. As you can see, there's multiple ways of tying the wire from our last video. From this video, you can see there's multiple ways of protecting it. Of all the different methods I showed you, if I'm not using solder, that union splice where you wrap the wire this way, then wrap the wire that way, and heat shrinking it with a proper marine heat shrink, that's still my favorite splice. Other than doing a solder, you can't, hey, come on, you just can't top a good solder joint because you're not going to pull that apart. So everyone, if you enjoyed that video, hit me with a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. So everyone, appreciate you hanging out with me. Peace out. Later, y'all.